Greetings, good people, and welcome to the Business Practice for Creative Industries Profit and Loss Spreadsheet. This is Jeff Ebbs talking to you. Um, I've put together the Profit and Loss Spreadsheet for you so that we can map the business model canvas activities that we have carried out during this project onto the finances. So the finances, the money flowing in, and the money flowing out are the bottom lines of the business model canvas. And so in a profit and loss spreadsheet, we usually have the revenue lines at the top. So here are some t-shirts that we're selling for $20 each, and we're selling 20 of those a week. Uh, jeans, jackets, or we might be selling service. So we're charging our clients $150 an hour for logo design and the designer is doing five hours a week on logo design. So all of that revenue adds up nice and quickly. So we're getting nearly $500,000 a year from all of this activity. But we have to spend money to make money. So if we have a look at these services, we're charging the client $150 an hour to design logos, but we're paying our designer $75 an hour. Now, a little note just came up there. It said, if designers take a percentage, do not pay them wages. So wages are part of our fixed costs. So these costs here, the operating costs, are the costs of buying and selling the t-shirts or the jeans, and um, the costs of uh, providing the services. These fixed costs are costs that we pay regardless of whether or not we're doing any services. Now these wages here, if designers get wages, make service costs zero. But these wages might be for the t-shirt, so we need to clarify what's going on there. We've got some t-shirts and some design services, so we've muddled up two businesses. But the point is that we are um, making about half a million dollars a year but we're spending nearly well a bit more than 200 there and a bit more than 150 there so by the time we put all of that together um, we don't have that much left over so here are our setup costs in the beginning we had to buy computers vehicles so there's three sorts of costs our operating costs, which are the cost of actually making the product or buying the product and the cost of delivering the service. So these costs go up and down when we sell more products or services. These fixed costs don't go up or down. They're fixed. They're the same every week, month, quarter or so on. So our fixed costs are there whether or not we are getting any money in the door. And our setup costs, we spend them once at the beginning when we start up our business. And so what we're saying is, if our setup costs are $42,000, $42,000, um, and our monthly expenses are $13,000, $13,000, then we need about $100,000 to get our business going. So $53,000 for the um, fixed requirement, a um, little bit extra there, and some setup costs. So we are... Uh, going to borrow $100,000, which means we're going to be repaying about $3,000 a month. We'll go into how we work out these numbers later. And that means that we're making about $11,000 a month in this, in this business. So profit and loss, you understand it. Now, that's what happens when we get the business going. Let's have a look at that over time. So we're going to map our profit and loss onto what we call the cash flow. So see this tab down the bottom here is the cash flow. Here is our product one, service one, and so on. Here's our fixed costs. And one of the fixed costs is our repayments. So we don't need to worry about those one-off costs except when we're repaying the money. And what we see is the first three months, we're not making any money in those first three months, but our fixed costs are still going out. And so the money that we borrowed from the bank is going down, down, down as we um, 
deal with the fact that we've got fixed costs going out. We're making a loss in those first three months. And then we start to build up towards the numbers that we thought we were going to make. Now, when you see these little things, that means that the, the little hatch symbols, that means that the number is bigger than the space. So what you do when you've got one of those, you grab the whole spreadsheet by clicking there and you double click the thing and it makes the lines just wide enough to get those numbers in. So what this cash line is, is the amount of money we've got in the bank. So after we've borrowed the 100000 from the bank and spent all of the setup costs, we start off with $53,000. It goes down, down, down to almost zero. Then it starts building up. So at the end of the first year, you've got $60,000 in the bank. And you might say, well, let's take $20,000 each as a Christmas present. That actually topped up our fairly minimal wage we've been getting all year. And um, so that number would go down to 4,648. And then the next year you would have even more money. So the business is growing. So again, there's an assumption there about growth. But what you can see is this allows you to plan over time. And if you took out that um, $60,000, you might just say uh, that that now becomes 4,648. And then the spreadsheet still works, it um, starts to build up again. So what we've done is we've overwritten a number. So the spreadsheet predicts what's going to happen and then you can put in actual amounts as you go. So the spreadsheet flows from left to right. Let's have a look at that in our setup spreadsheet here. These yellow boxes are numbers that can only come from you. You decide what price your t-shirt and jeans are going to put in, so you type into the yellow box. So I'm going to start saying, look, for the beginning, I'm only going to charge $15 a t-shirt, or I'm just going to bring my t-shirt prices down so I sell more of them. I'm going to sell 30 of them instead, so I should make roughly the same money. But hang on, something just went red here. And what went red there is that the computer has estimated based on our assumptions that we would only sell 82 a week. So we need to go and have a look at where those assumptions are stored. So if we just move left in our spreadsheet, we can see here that the research we did in week, in the third week, the week we dealt with the right hand side of the business model canvas. We talked about the number of customers, how much those customers buy, the number of competitors selling the same thing. And we predicted, or the computer has predicted, what penetration of the market you're gonna get. So if there's five people in the market, you might get as much as 20% each, that would be the average amount, but you are coming in new, so the computer has predicted you will get halfway towards your 20% in three years. So a fairly conservative estimate, but always better to have conservative revenue estimates and high cost estimates to make sure that you don't uh, come unstuck. And so if that happens, if that prediction is right, you would be making six, you would be selling 1,600 items a year after three years. But your growth rate is, we're predicting 15%, which is considered pretty good. So at the beginning, it's estimating that you would be selling 82. So you can't just make up numbers and chuck them here, in here, because that um, goes against the market research that you've done. So this just keeps you vaguely honest. You can't go more than double without that going red. So, you know, what happens? Well, we're already pretty high. So we just leave those assumptions, but we'll drop our price. And so now we're making less revenue. So these assumptions come in and affect the numbers in some parts of the spreadsheet. These bright yellow ones are ones that you come up with. And then down here, these ones are worked out by the computer, but you can override them. So a t-shirt that you sell for $15, it assumes that you will cost, it will cost $7.50, which is $8. And it works that out from, based on what you've said your margin would be. So the product margin here is 50%. You're making 50% on each t-shirt. 
So you might say, well, I've dropped the price. It's still, when I had that price at $20, it was costing me $10. And when I'm selling it for $15, I'm actually making less margin. So I'm going to put that in. Let's assume that it might be 33%. Now it's still costing me $10. Now my profit is going to be lower. So now I'm under the, I was up nearly close to 100,000 before. So now when we look at my cash flow, um, I've got less money in the bank there, but we're still getting, see, we don't have the 60,000 we spent there. So we've dropped our profit a bit. Hopefully that does make us sell more. So the general rule is type in the bright yellow boxes in the spreadsheet will work. If you want to override that, you can type in the not so bright yellow boxes and things won't break. There are some places where the spreadsheet will gently remind you by flashing red. If I put in 200 here, it goes, no, no, I don't like that because you're selling 10 times as many as you told me that the market was going to be. So those assumptions work there. So the cash flow is totally calculated by the assumptions. Here are those hatch marks again. So we select the whole spreadsheet, double click on the first line. Now the spreadsheet is widened out. Um, and we don't have to type in anything in there. But if we did want to type something, let's say we took that um, money out there. So we uh, leave... We're going to leave 9993 in the bank. We're going to take 80,000 out between the three of us. And um, now that um, hasn't broken the spreadsheet, but it has taken that 80,000 out of the account. So we can always affect the right-hand side by t overwriting the assumptions that come from the left-hand side. That's the way the spreadsheet works. So the assumptions are on the left and that flows through going right. There are some other assumptions in here. We get these little um, purple tags. And what this says is, if you're paying your wages, um, if you're paying your designers based on the fee that you're charging your client, then that's a charge out factor. So if I change the charge out factor to 2.5, which a lot of companies do, when I get, um, 150 from the client I only give the designer 60 so that means more money is coming into the business to buy new things but since you're your own designers you probably want to make that as low as you can to make the company still make money so all of the areas in the business model canvas have been brought together here numerically to give you the finances you can look at whether the business can be profitable and you can look at how that affects your cash flow and you can make um, change the assumptions about how fast you're growing and have a bit of fun with your business. We have a spreadsheet that works if you follow the rules. It's got more options than we have time to explain now. The best thing to do is download a copy and save a working copy and a safe copy so that if you break it, you can go back and start again. So always uh, keep your safe copy untouched and make a good working copy that you can play with. Play with the yellow numbers and see what happens. And then if it's not doing what you want, then see if you can fiddle with the formulas, talk to your tutor, or feel, me to, feel free to drop me an email or a SMS message. My contact details are in learning at uh, Griffith. All the best and thanks for watching.